different locations and had different experiences than most people report. Yeah. Yes, we're live, folks. Uh, we, we're already in deep conversation, so we're going to invite you all in. I know it's it's very magnanimous of us, but that's what we do. Uh, welcome, everybody. Favor and Bisto and Bosto to everyone. Thank you for joining us. And uh, today, on a second look, is my co-host, Miss Trina Phoenix. How are you, my dear? I'm wonderful. How are you? Uh, any better? And I'd be guilty. Absolutely. <laughs> but then again, I was never that innocent. Me neither. <laughs> and we're honored to have uh, joining us. Uh, and Judith, is it Koba? Is that right? Koba. How you it, like, like you would say, quick? Yes. Koba. It's Koba. an African name. It's a Kenyan name. So okay. the, this combination of letters K W or M Z M followed by a Z that's typical African. Okay, excellent. Uh, Judith and I, she, I did a uh, interview with her over on her uh, show, and last week when we were talking, and Trina, boy, the shows lately have really uh, caused people to do a lot of deep diving in the core of their structures, uh, and Judith said this, and I'd like to talk about this as well, and so we're going to talk about judgment. I mean, it is probably the number one fear um, that I, and, and when I counsel people, uh, is that, that, that's the one thing that they're most afraid of. Mm. I yeah. think it's so, it's such a deeply ingrained program. Yeah. And, 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 and I think that is to, um, to stop you from knowing your potential. Yeah. yeah you find it basically in all religions. Yes. That um, there will be some sort of judgment. You find it in the, uh, the even the ancient Egyptians when Maat comes with a feather and then weighs your heart. And if your heart weighs more than the feather, then you have to go to the underworld. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but funny enough, when I look at what these self-proclaimed elites, or as I like to call them, the scum of the earth, <laughs> you know, how, how they deal, how, how, how they act, they couldn't care less. They act as if there's no judgment at all. Yeah, exactly. So maybe do they know something that we do not? I was meditating this morning, uh, ladies, and here's where I'm, I'm, I, I've arrived at you know, because I've taken the red pill. And uh, I found out Wonderland is not such a bad place. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of cool. But yep. if, if the paradigm holds true of a judgment, what you then you can have your camp over here that says, well, I believe in source. I believe in the creator. Okay. But by implication, your creator, whoever you believe in, created the very paradigm that we're dealing with. You're going to be judged for your life or lives. Uh, I don't know what scale. I don't know what template I'm going to be judged upon, but that's the theme. And my contention is, as I was meditating deeply on this, there cannot be any judgment because if there was judgment, then the creator would have to judge itself. And if the creator judges itself, then that means all other judgments are null and void. Anyway. Yeah. You know how they also say um, that there's this line of thought out there that you will experience after death what you deeply believe in. So meaning you might meet Mohammed if that is your um, conviction, and you, you might meet Jesus and whatever. So if I say I'm not going to be judged, then hello, maybe that is my experience. And people should not freak out if I say that. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that's kind of where I've gone with it. It's like, um, 
I don't think anybody could judge me better than me. So I want to go to the highest part of my soul structure. My, uh, I want to go over soul because I know the soul is emotional personality, holds ego, holds templates, holds Akashic records, earthbound reality, very dualistic in its, in its essence, formation, creation, nature. So I want to see if I can get above that and merge with that. And if there's any judgment to be had, I want it to come from myself and myself and my only self. So who better to deal with me than me? Exactly. Well, that's, what, that's what the master said. You know, if you, if you believe in the construct of Jesus, he did kind of give it away when, you know, I, in fact, I read it yesterday in the, you know, the gospel of Luke, he says, if you don't judge, then you will not be judged. If you do not condemn, then you will not be condemned. It's interesting because he never used in any pronoun or noun god mm -hmm. he used the noun you yeah. <laughs> i mean did he or did he not i mean yeah, that's what it said it he's like it's all about you man <laughs> it's all about you <laughs> so judith i mean it, it's absolutely i think i i, I and I, I i'll say this i think it is absolutely uh biblically scripturally correct to say there is no judgment. Now, I don't know what you do with revelations. Uh, and here's something I, I, I'll, I'll you mean open the up. Lake of fire? The great white throne judgment in revelations. I mean, that freaked my ass out for decades. I mean, it really did. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, you really don't know how the dice are going to roll for you. You know, mm. you're counting in over on the book of Malachi because I was a tither. Oh, girls, I was a tither. And you know why? Well, because I wanted to be assured that as the verse says in the book of Malachi, my name was written in the book of the living. Mm -hmm. Forget the book of life. I, fine, if I could make in that, cool. But at least if I got in the book of living, then that means implies there's going to be something, you know. Uh -huh. Interesting, I wonder, huh? I wonder if that's hot, the, the trap part, the living part, because live is evil and life is eiffel if you flip them so, yeah I, you know i like looking at things backwards because uh, when you look at things backwards a lot of times you're getting what's happening in the subconscious strata which is the operation mode modem for this construct it's it's 95 percent of it is subconscious so yeah if we can start to understand what's going on in there we're way ahead of the game can I just elaborate on that one point? Because literally, medically, uh, physiology, that's exactly how we see. We don't see the world as it is. It's reversed. Yeah. It hits our cornea reversed. Yes. <laughs> oh, man, I don't jack with your head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it was so funny today. I was like contemplating. I was like flat earth, round earth. And I was like, what if it's an eyeball? And so it's right. It's flat and round. You know, I'll just say this. When I look in my telescope, I don't see squares in space. Nope. I just Me see too. circles. Me yeah. too. And they all have holes in them too. <laughs> I mean, my telescope right now, uh, the conjunction of where Venus is with the last uh, crescent, you know, last quarter uh, is phenomenal. And Venus is going through some changes. But uh, maybe that's judgment. So haven't yeah. some of the other planets gone through changes too, Wayne? The outer Pluto. planets, and now Pluto. it's getting closer. It okay. is getting closer. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So is that a form of judgment? It is the natural law that says, you know, for instance, in um, cosmology, that our sun novas about every twelve thousand years. And because apparently our sun attracts dust. So imagine if you had that knowledge prior to our version, you could really manipulate people to really believe that a certain event is coming. And if you don't behave this way, then this is going to be the call. True? Totally. If you don't do as I tell you, I'm going to make the sun go dark in three days. And, and then when it happens, they're like, uh-oh. Yeah. Oh, man, you're down on your knees. Totally. I totally saw that happening in Egypt. 
And there is um, another line of thought that uh, Saturn used to be our original sun. Yes. In fact, um, I have a, um, it's one of the esoteric books um, considered to be the occult mm -hmm. uh, on the rights of Saturn. And Yahweh has claimed rights to Saturn. You know, it would make sense because they- What do you mean by that? Um, you know, it's very interesting because it's, it's the dwelling place of where they think that the Elohim actually do live. And oh. when, if you study Saturn, and I did a whole show on Saturn, the anomalies, um, it's collecting more moons than Jupiter. Um, it's, it's, it's poles are doing strange things and there are more, and I'll just be candid. There, there are more craft that have been photographed through our telescopes of coming into Saturn and leaving Saturn. So, uh, it is the belief that Yahweh, the Elohim, when he left the temple in Jerusalem in Solomon's, uh, rule, and I guess that would be somewhere right around 598 uh, BCE, depending on how you look at it. Saturn, Solomon's temple. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. That wow, totally makes sense. The deity oh. left. And, um, and, 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 and if you look at, there's a whole belief system of people who believe Yahweh, but they also believe in Saturn as well, that Saturn was in fact Earth's sun, before we were swept into this current uh, solar system. Mm. What do you make of the idea that the Elohim come from Sirius? I think that's completely uh, feasible. Absolutely, okay. I do. Yeah. Mm. yeah me too. Yeah. Um, yeah totally. And then that leads me to this point about judgment. Judgment would indicate imperfectness in balance. I don't understand the construct of a heaven and hell as the highest form of intelligence. <laughs> that, that, that that's the best they could come up with. Mm -hmm. And I'm like you, Judith, when I leave here, I'm heading to the beach. Yeah, I'm a free agent. I will not be judged. No <laughs> live reviews for Judith. Thanks, but no thanks. You can keep your shit. <laughs> I love that. I'm totally signing up for that. I love that. <laughs> I mean, because I was thinking this, and, and so here I am meditating, and I'm reviewing my life, and I think that's very important for preparing for the next life, and it was interesting because I had this, this schizophrenic relationship with God. I was a born-again spirit filled tongue talking hands laying on uh christian and i would spend hours praying in tongues and be literally transported to other places so i knew that there was something foundational to this but when i look at my relationship with this god it was both a, uh i don't know if i actually ever loved the god because i was more afraid of it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is a form of judgment that if you walk around perpetually with that mindset, I mean, that you're, you're living in a perpetual judgment of yourself. In fear. Constant in fear, thank fear. you. And that's what, man, that's, that's fear. That's their tool to confuse you, fear. Yeah, and bang, right there. I mean... That is the, one of the lowest frequencies that you can operate on. And there, even with that fear, you have condemned yourself because your frequency is probably that low that you cannot exit. And you know what? I think this is literally that you just nailed it. This is the key for judgment. This is your key and it's called vibration. Mm -hmm. mm. That is judgment. Where do you vibrate at? I looked up judgment in the Geomatria. First yes. thing that came up was vibration. I was oh. like, bam, I do it. You will get what you think about. You will get what you feel about. So you need to make sure as soon as you realize you're out of your body that you're deceased, you start focusing on what you want to see. 
and you need to get your vibration straight and 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 get your bearings and take a little time with yourself and and really get your vibration where you want it to be because you are going to be drawn like a magnet to wherever your vibration is matching so let me ask you ladies on this one i think that this is becoming much more of a topic that people are talking about hmm. judgment you know what is this i mean we live in a day today where everything culturally is being examined it's being judged and you can see the wackiness of how it's so imbalanced and how it's being done and i think about you know right so if we start spreading this and you have the debate and you come to the same conclusions that well at least i have it's like the only judgment i'm going to look at is the mirror of myself yeah <laughs> and i love myself i'm a really a groovy type of dude i may not be the dude most high but, you know, I'm a pretty high stepping dude. I really liked myself. And, you know, it's, it took 60 plus years to get to that point. Yeah. And I would also say that it has nothing to do with that, that we think we are better than others. No. We, we all make mistakes here. I would argue that you cannot navigate here without making mistakes. No way. No. But as far as I know, none of us and even not the listeners have ever planned a genocide or uh, started huge wars on false pretenses and so on and so forth. So no. I think we are, we are pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that when in fact, you know, this is my whole debate about Lucifer hmm. because in this whole debate, Lucifer has a name that's been always, I think, subjugated to scorn but in fact, you know, if the character ever lived, it would be the one of the first ones I'd want to have break bread with. Uh, because to me, I've never seen Lucifer ever talk about judgment. Mm. No judgment had ever been written about him, but it has been about the Christian God, the Jewish God. It certainly has been of the Islamic God, the Hindu gods. I mean, I can go right down the list. All of those gods, they either are jealous <laughs> They get angry, they kill, and but then wait a minute, then why aren't they judging themselves? If you're telling me murder is an acronym for the word uh, hate, well. <laughs> you know what I was just thinking? As what? Stargate SG-1 all told us that these are just, you know, aliens with better technology. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Oh, good. totally. But you know what? I think Lucifer has some specific um, element to our flesh body because, you know, it's phosphorus. So that's part luminous. Of it. Yeah. Yeah. Fire, yeah. phosphorus. It's, it's phosphorus and that's Venus. So I really do think, like I said, our chakra systems, the energy wheels that run in our body are connected to these planetary bodies. So I think the, the light bearer, phosphorus, it definitely has some very important role in our species because it, it's part of an elemental chart, one of the, you know, plutonic solids. So I know it has to be a very important part of what we are. According to the Thunderbird Project, and the, they did a movie called uh, An Alien Sky. Yeah. Um, did you see that, Judith? Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And so they write about when Venus came in as a comet planet. And our ancestors saw it and it changed, which gets me back to this whole thing. Boy, we can really get in on this rabbit hole because it tells me that our solar system, what we see today is not as old as they keep telling us. Mm -hmm. We had ancestors who saw Venus come in and apparently whatever this was, it kicked Mars's butt and it pushed Saturn away from us. And they said um and there's two different sources that they brought out but the bronze books brings out the, the fact that the first sun that was here was the golden sun yes. and that it it had a life that when this new sun came in everything died on the surface you mean the solar sun yeah mm -hmm. what, what the one that we call our sun right now yeah, allegedly we are. Allegedly, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, <laughs> which pill do you right want to take? <laughs> now we are living under a uh, sun simulator. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, so it, it gets you into this whole th- hell. I mean, the idea that hell, um, I was thinking this today. So how does hell exist, ladies, in the fact that if it did exist, it's truly the mafia. This is a Costa Nostra uh, operation because hell couldn't exist unless it was in cahoots with heaven. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously. Mm -hmm. And Lynn and I were talking last night and she just, she just started laughing. She says, you know, anyway, I said, honey, I said, think about this. I said, so God, the Christian God, the Islam God, the re- all these gods demand worship. They want your obedience. She says, yeah. And I said, and so that really means that they want your worship. You know, the Bible says that God inhabits the worship of the praise of his people. She says, yeah. I said, so Satan is supposed to be the antithesis of God, right? Correct? Mm-hmm. Well, then, then that would imply that Satan wouldn't want worshipers at all. Mm-hmm. Which would then imply that hell is really a free form state of consciousness because the cat that's supposed to be running it is the opposite of the cat that he's opposed to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I, think, I once I saw think... a video with a Catholic priest, and he very blatantly said, we made that up to scare you. <laughs> yes, he did. Yes, he did. You know but, what? But I think, you know, our minds are so powerful. Man, mm. if you really believe you're going to go to hell, uh, you will create that thought form and you will create that realm. I really do think that. So you can't think that, you know, that's something a lot of people need to work on getting out of their construct because we will create what we think about we need to be responsible with what we think of in our consciousness so people who truly do believe this if some being comes up and says oh yep you didn't make the cut now you got to go to hell they'll go to hell because they believe this stuff so you know you gotta you gotta be really careful with what you allow into your consciousness especially when you're out of your body because this is when i think it can get tricky yeah and it's it's very this net that they have woven yes. you know it's that yes. you are born and bang yes. You're like, yes. You know, yes. yeah you <laughs> didn't take even took your first breath That's it. you're See, a sinner right away oh, oh my god that's what really pisses me off i mean where I'm at life now, I look at this and I, and I bought it. I bought into this and it sucks to think that if we come into this realm, fate is already planned your destiny. <laughs> You're going to fail. Hmm. You're going to screw up. Uh-huh. You're going to coitus it all over the place. You know, um, that's better it's than so using. The you know what I heard the other day, Wayne, I said, I was do, doing a lot of that geomatria study and I, and I saw G O D God of death or no game of death it said game of death. And I was like, wow, that totally makes sense because, okay, when we come here, it's all based upon time, birth and death. So mm-hmm. this is the realm of death. So G O D game of death that would make sense if this had anything to do with saturn because saturn is chronos father time Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely i was going to say saturn rules time that's what i'm saying so it would make sense that saturn would be ruling all of this because time rules all of this so what do you have a lot of um saturn uh, saturn symbolism also in uh, christianity the the black robes of the clergy and um Funny enough, always when men step into some form of power, a lot of times they end up wearing some women's dresses, you know, the free yes. with the, um, uh, what do you call that thing? The, the apron and, yes. and yep. um, the, the judges and Wigs. the clergy. Well, the ring in matrimony. As you can yeah, see, exactly. the, and the you wedding can ring up the is cross Saturn. Into a cube. Yeah, and the graduation board on your head is the water board, cube of Saturn. This is all cube worship. You know what's so funny? I keep seeing it's like 
I wonder if it is just as simple as, um, you know, because the divine feminine part of all of this has just been quashed and it's been totally into patri you know, patriarchal powers in all the three Abrahamic religions across the board and government systems. I just have a feeling that none of this is going to heal until the divine feminine is brought back into the picture with the divine masculine and there's balancing of that because right now we're, that's what's going on. It, it's like certain positions of power are supposed to be feminine. Certain are supposed to be masculine. Well, what they're doing is they're taking the divine, the divine feminine attributes and they're, they're, they're masculine. So they're creating the feminine attribute through a false reversal of power. So it's, it's an inversion of the divine feminine. Well, here's a thought. Some say that Saturn is where the warden lives. That actually it's Saturn where the quarantine net starts. That would make sense. Well, you know, I, I was studying last night pretty late and it was interesting. I have seven references now everywhere from uh, interview with an alien where Ariel talks about the quarantine, talks about Saturn, mm -hmm. talks about the expeditionary force and what they encountered um, to as recent as the, um, uh, the, the channeling of the Archangel uh, Dominici that- Archangel. Pardon? <laughs> the Archangel. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, and, and, and that's a good point, because you think about the archons, you think about this whole construct, it is in a quarantined matrix. Yes. Now, it brings up the question, then, what are these other beings, how are they getting in? If we believe in ET, UFOs, an alien agenda, some say, depends on who you, you listen to, that there is a... Um, very large force outside of Saturn. In fact, they were able to find it on radar coming up into where we call the asteroid belt and they lost it, an armada of ships who are come to overthrow this God, Yahweh, the Elohim. Mm -hmm. It's when the Elohim secured Earth as a base of operation, it expanded their empire. And prior to this time, Earth was not a part of the Milky Way. We were part of the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. Mm -hmm. And it was part of this conquest of the Elohim that when this collision took place is that when they made their move. And that's when you have the story of the Bible that comes in with the Samaritan who becomes the patriarchal figure of the Abrahamic religions. It's very odd to me that you have Enki and Enyel and you have Abraham, who Abram was from the city of Ur in the Chaldeans. And it's very odd to see that the patriarch of all these three major world religions came from Sumer. And, and, and if you follow the logic of this, Abram and his family were actually worshipers of Inanna, the moon goddess. Yes. They actually made idols. Now, that would then imply that Abram, Abram was very familiar with Enki and Enyo. Mm -hmm. Now, Abram goes sojourning from Ur and meets this deity called Yahweh. So the question really becomes, and when you study Yahweh, Yahweh was never that powerful. Yahweh could never go outside the boundary of what we call the promised land. All of his exploits took place inside that, except for, if you believe the story, of the exodus of the slaves. But getting back to the point, Yahweh from the very beginning was a judgmental God. He was a God of blood. Mm -hmm. The first encounter with the first human being was a slaughter, uh, a sacrifice of a ox mm -hmm. in which Abram, if you remember the story, had to basically chase off the vultures and had to walk in the midst of that blood waiting for this deity to show up. And that's when they made the first covenant. 
Wow. Yeah. Whenever I see. <laughs> I mean, did you? You've never outside. heard that story? Yes. Yes. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's just wow, though. When you think about it, it's like wow. Yeah, it is wow. Wow. It affects us today. Yeah. And like you said, Judith, I'm not going to participate. No. no. Judgment? No, that ain't my ticket. <laughs> That's not what my ticket says. Oh, you can't read English? Well, let me tell you, my ticket gives me first class accommodations right over there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, if you let us know where, which beach you are going to. <laughs> Right. <laughs> then we will join you for a cocktail. I will let you know. I do believe. I told Lynn last night. I said, "Hun, when I cross over, I said, whoever of us is first, I said, just wait for me. I said, you know, or I said, if I go, I'll be waiting for you. Or I said, I'll leave you the sign to the beach. <laughs> right on. I want to go too. Sign me up. And I people... think that's going to be important for us to have a meeting place. I, I, for, I really do. I really do. I can't help but think that Brian, you know, because he was of the same spirit. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, let me ask you all this. Uh, Judith, I want to ask you particularly, and then Trina, get your impression. It's becoming very obvious as the books as I continue to bring out. It shows that we may have the same outer structure, Mm -hmm. But it's very, very evident. We're not all of the same spirit. Many of us are not even of the same soul. I even doubt that everybody has a spirit. Interesting. Yeah. I do too. I do too. Would it be more soul based, more what we would call ego? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think we all have encountered people like that. Mm -hmm. So sometimes, you know what other people call NPC? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where you somehow have the impression you are talking to a wall <laughs> and, and nothing really goes through. And I, I saw one uh, really funny situation where I thought, oh, that's a typical NPC situation that we had these huge demonstration in Berlin. And after the second one, um, the next day when they wanted to wrap it up, close down the stage and, you know, sound technicians and so forth. So uh, the guy was streaming and uh, one policewoman, she let him into this area because he was supposed to wrap it up. So then after a while, she came back and then she said, yeah, you know, you are actually, you are only filming here. You are not really working. And that is why you have to go now. And then he said, yes, but, you know, your colleagues over there, they let not the technicians that I need, they do not let them enter. So, and I need them to wrap it up here, but you keep them outside. Yes, she said, exactly. And that is why you have to leave now as well. But th and then he said, he said, yeah, but you want us to wrap up and get everything packed and you want us to leave, right? Yes. Yes, he said, then I need these technicians. How, how, how mm -hmm. about you let them in? And that conversation went back and forth, back and forth for minutes. And I, th I was laughing so hard and I thought that's a typical NPC situation. Absolutely. Some they, say they that that's that. what hell is. <laughs> right. Trying to reason with an unreasonable person. Absolutely. You know, like, what, what, you know. Absolutely. I, I'll have to resort to what there was a group in the um, late 60s and 70s called Fire Sign Theater. And if you ever took LSD, they were a great uh, group to listen to. But anyway, they had one scene where it was where the psychedelic culture had taken over in San Francisco and the cops were like very cool, you know, and they said, what's ever your bag, babe, what's ever your bag, peace, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm just saying, and, and, and speaking of this, as you were talking, Judith, 
I have met on one of my out of body experiences um, beings that questioned me. And I, I remember specifically some of the questions they asked. And they asked specifically, was there anything I really wanted back on earth? And I said, yeah. And they said, well, you can't go any further. Bye. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard that before. Interesting enough, I have heard that before. Yeah. What do you mean you, you can't go any further? Well, you know. Um, it was explained to me if you have any attachments. Yeah, that's what it they is. They bind you. Oh, okay, okay, okay. They bind you, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, a, yeah, that, yeah. 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 I think if it was to be asked of me today, I'd probably say, no, let's, let's get, let's go forward. It's, you know, earth is to me. You know, is, when, when I, when I figured that out and then, and then it was like that, I got asked that kind of same question in, in uh, the, in the moment of the breaking my fully breaking my whole God spell and trying to figure out what they kept asking me to be careful for the Jesus trap. I kept trying to figure it out. <laughs> and that was when I like, when I was like, I'll drop this body right now if this is what's keeping me stuck. Cause if this is the worst false idol worship I got going on, I'm like, I'm like, I'll take this thing out. And, and then I, my spirit's like, no, you know, don't do it. But it, that's when I had the serpent dream was because uh, I'm like, I'm letting it all go. I'll, I'll dump this doll right now, man. Good, but bye. You know, I was like, and the, my seriousness of it, I think was why I had the dream of, my child, you are now free from the watery grave of which you slept. You are now free from the bondage of the serpent. And it was because I was like, I'm going to let it all go. I, I mean, if this is all a bunch of lies, a bunch of deceptions, I was like, I'm done with it all. I mean, all of it. I was just frustrated beyond you know, utter absolute frustration. I just wanted to know the truth and I was so tired of being lied to it. I just had a meltdown, you know? <laughs> I was like, I just need to know the truth. And that was where I landed. And I was like, I'm done with it all, <clears throat> all of it. And that was my response. So we are not even supposed to say word peace. <laughs> right. Right. It's like you know, when, when they have these beauty competitions and they interview the... <laughs> That's true. Yeah. <laughs> what do you want? Then you're always supposed to say, what oh, please. And, and it still reminds me of uh, someone who wrote, in fact, it, I think it was on your channel, uh, Trina, someone said, well, and, and I dig the question. They said, well, if this peace and love thing is really supposed to work, it's been around for at least 2000 years. What, what are we doing wrong? Right. I mean, and it's, and it's true. I mean, I, I, I got to be candid. And Judith, I'm curious, do you come from a formal religious background upbringing? Oh my God, I have such an odyssey. <laughs> <laughs> well, please pray do tell us. <laughs> okay, so grew up with father atheist. Uh, from my mother's side, a long array of Jehovah's Witnesses. Oh boy. So there was some friction there. <laughs> oh wow i was gonna say wow what it, wow. i mean I talk about the antithesis of distance i mean my uh stepmother brought me and our my brothers and sisters for a time to the kingdom hall mm -hmm. we did the weekly studies in another woman's house so and and to then to go for an atheist <laughs> but continue yeah so um in 1996, I decided I do not want to have anything to do with Jehovah's Witnesses whatsoever anymore, in, in whatever shape or form. Uh, that led to my mother not talking to me for 20 years, for more than 20 years. Yeah, yeah I, I basically didn't exist. Yeah. So, um, and then I had yeah, let's say a um, short phase where I practiced Tibetan Buddhism. It was interesting. Um, the most interesting thing that I did there was a uh, pova. Pova used to be a secret um, teaching. 
And then um, the 16th Kamapa of the uh, Kamakaju lineage, he decided to make it public and known in the West because his conclusion was that the Westerners are so neurotic when it comes to aging, disease and death mm -hmm. that they need that <laughs> teaching. Mm -hmm. So, and what you do there, it is, is for three days and um, yeah, you have three hours in the morning, three in the afternoon and three in the evening. And you learn how to shoot your consciousness out here deliberately mm -hmm. so that you do not, you shouldn't exit here. I mean, here is better than down there. Don't exit through the butt. That's really not okay. Right. <laughs> getting the ass end of the deal. Right. Yeah, so um, yeah, you learn that, and um, and it was a very interesting experience. I did that one twice the following year as well. And then there came a point for me where I just knew, you know what, Judith, you have to drop all isms, all of them. And uh, so I did. I never looked back. Have you, in the interim, looked into, you know, the occult knowledge? Have you, um, obviously, I mean, because I don't know if to me, it's a, it's a natural direction to go in when you, when you get free of the God spell, mm -hmm. Trina, as you were pointing out, now all of a sudden you're faced with this mountain of knowledge that was forbidden. Yeah. And, uh, right. and then it almost confuses you even more because that's what happened to me. You know, I was starting to break away from this stuff and I kept getting this information about this, be careful of the Jesus trap. And I knew it had to do with religion, but I, I didn't have a full comprehension of it. And that was something I really wanted to, to try to understand, you know, to have a full knowing of this. And it, it, like I said, I started to break it down. Then I started to look at all the people that were born on the same day and all the same stories and all the Sumerian stuff. And all, I was looking at all this stuff and it was like, man, we don't even know what's going on. You know what I mean? It was just like so overwhelming. I was like, we really, we, pro we probably just don't even know what's going on. Everything's been so hidden and what hasn't been hidden, hidden has been twisted. So it's completely the opposite of what it should be. So everything here is upside down, backwards land. So that was that was hard. That was a hard place to be in for a long time. So Judith, where are you at today? Where where do you stand within yourself? Where is I mean? Because I think for myself, once the core has been shattered, you have to rebuild it, mm -hmm. and. You know, I carefully now look at the material that I add to the cord to see if it's really of any uh, benefit. So where are you at today? Um, I have a lot of trust in myself. Mm -hmm. And um, when <clears throat> I told you that I had this uh, brain surgery in December, yeah? Yes, so I remember that. Even, now, th th even then, I knew that I would be okay. That, and I did it all by myself. There, nobody was informed because <laughs> I don't have a cell phone. So I cannot grab a phone and look up all the numbers. And the doctor said, yeah, well, did, uh, we, shall we not even inform your mother? Because since a couple of months, we, um, we are in contact after more than 20 years because she has left the congregation as well. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so, um, and I said, no, you know, she has a new telephone number and that is a secret one. And I don't know it from the top of my head. And um, yeah, and then they said, yeah, okay, then we have to do it all by ourselves. And <laughs> I said, you know what? I'm okay with that. I don't need anybody to pin their hopes and horrors on me. Yes. I think wow. I prefer it this way. That's and a then, profound statement that you just said. That is. And they, they all looked at each other as if they 
are going to say, what is wrong with that woman? <laughs> no, that's just a testimony to how, how much internal work you've done and how strong you've actually become. And, and that's the, the, the straight up honest truth of it is, like I said, in the end of it all, we're going to be dealing with ourselves. <laughs> Mm. You're going to be dealing with this and that's all you're going to be dealing with. There's, it's going to be all, what have you created? What are you, how do you vibrate? How do you affect the world around you? That's mm -hmm. what's going to be what matters in the end. It's yeah. simple. It's kind of simple. And you, 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 you know that and you're anchored in it and that's powerful, but it takes a lot to get there. Good yeah. Job. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. And I also, I turned it into a little um, experiment. I mean, I was really in bad shape when the ambulance picked me up because I could no longer stand upright. I was vomiting all the time, even a sip of water that came back after a couple of minutes, I was pretty dehydrated. So, and then my neighbor called the uh, ambulance and we froze some stuff into a bag and while I was doing that and although I was really in bad shape I thought to myself you know what you will not bring with you one book you don't have a phone anyway so no distraction there the tv will not be switched on and you will see if you can handle it being with yourself Yes. You will find that out during these days. Yeah. And I did. And I handled it and I was okay. Yep. Yep. Didn't feel bored. Didn't feel um the only thing after a couple of days they operated on me on Monday which was my birthday. Wow. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they uh, took me in on Friday. And um, so, wow. <laughs> and then Saturday morning, they uh, already, they made an MRI and then they t informed me that it, the tumor was not malignant, but that it had to be removed. Otherwise I would stay, yeah, I would probably stay just- Stay sick, yeah. 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 And- And then they said, yeah, you know, you know, we would like to do that on Monday. If you're getting really, really worse, then we can do it at any given moment, of course. But if you are okay with that, then we would like to do it on Monday. And I said, yeah, go ahead. That's my birthday. Wow. <laughs> and then he looked yeah. at his chart and he said, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's amazing yeah wow. and uh, they did the uh, operation on monday and i le left the hospital on friday and um i i i just informed the doctors that i would do it i didn't even wait for the papers or anything very shaky i took a taxi <laughs> drove home because i needed to sleep i could not sleep in the hospital there was yes, all i totally hospital. understand that i told you so horrible you can you cannot really recover there you know what i mean and then saturday my mother came took me uh to the supermarket so Yeah, five days later, I was standing in the supermarket, very, very shaky, I have to say, but I did it. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that I left and uh, recovered here at home. Yeah, wow. And you got that time where you said hospitalization and, you know, potentially a life-threatening um, operation. Yeah, you get in tune to yourself real, real quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and um, that that was a yeah an interesting lecture. But the entire time, I just knew I will be okay. I you know I had the in the ER this doctor that came and uh, told me that uh, I have a brain tumor. He was so in. He came in and he was always fiddling with his phone and talking to me, and he was going like. Yeah, well, you have a brain tumor while he was fiddling on his phone. <laughs> oh, you know? far out, and, man. 
And to me, that it felt very cartoonish. Yeah? And I thought later on, I thought, you know what? It, it, that is okay with you because you're not easily scared or, yeah. But I, I thought to myself, if this had been a different patient, you know, really scared and not knowing what's going on and uh, so on. And then you have a doctor who's fiddling with his fucking phone while he's telling <laughs> you that you have a brain tumor. You know, right. I, I, I thought, <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> Thank God though, because you turned it into a cartoon. So you didn't really, you didn't adopt it as even being important information coming from a stupid cartoon character. That probably was part of how you healed everything so beautifully. Cause you probably didn't, you you're like, maintain. you know what? <laughs> you're a cartoon character and you're crazy and you don't belong in my reality. You need to go away. <laughs> Bye. You know, but it's, it's true for those. And, and many people have, I don't know uh, I when I say many, but you know, I was in the hospital for like 27, 29 days with a meningitis. And, um, and you're right. That, that's where I, I took the journey to the abyss. Mm. When I came out of the coma, I knew that uh, things had changed. And, you know, I looked at myself and uh, didn't like what I saw. And so I started making life changes. And, you know, mm. it, it does impact you. And I had the strangest experience after I came out of the, um, the uh, surgery and when I woke up. Oh, my goodness. That well, what was... did you experience? I mean, because they're, 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 they're literally, you know, messing with your brain. I mean, I, yeah, yeah. Like, so first of all, out? I have to say, I have no freaking idea where my consciousness went. It was as if somebody switched off a light and then somebody switched it back on. So there, there was no, not even the perception of nothingness. I, I, I when you had your surgery? Yeah. Yeah, that's that when I went under anesthesia, that's exactly how it felt to me. I had no perception of consciousness. It was just lights out and then it was lights on. Like I had nothing in between either. So I totally can relate to that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so that that's right. what the death what experience happened? is I, I literally said did you do the surgery when i woke up and they were like yeah we're done i was like really <laughs> <laughs> really <laughs> okay <laughs> well see that begs that question where does consciousness reside i mean many of us have been there and you're right um where yeah. does it go i go <laughs> i mean yeah, is, would, is it a fail-safe program? I would say that anesthesia is a tad bit different from dying, but I think so. I yeah. do. Well, I think so. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I look back on the time and it's odd we're talking about this as odd because I was was reviewing this. I um when I was going into anaphylactic shock, I had gotten stung like 35 times from the bees um, right right here. Oh. And uh, it's just so odd. We're talking. I, I've we've had this conversation before. Boy, what talk about a moment in time. Anyway, I can remember. I I, I knew I was leaving my body. I told the doctor in uh, in the ambulance as I, they were rolling me into the hospital. I said I'm leaving, and he said, "The hell you are." And, uh, you know, what I didn't know is that he had just gotten back from Afghanistan. He was a uh, cardiac doctor and he just happened to be in the uh, emergency room. Wow. And, uh, and I, I said, no, I, I'm leaving. And I could feel that it was a very pleasant feeling. I, I have to say, I found it very warm and inviting. Mm. And he comes back and I remember he's yelling at me right in my ear. He says, you get the blank back into your body. And I mean, you know, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess he had some experience with that. I don't know. Yeah. 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 But you didn't have any fear, right? When, when no, you... nothing. But as I said, then when I uh, came out of the surgery, I heard a voice in my head. I know that there was nobody. <laughs> okay. Well, was it, I, a, was it a good voice? 
yeah, well, you decide. <laughs> and I heard this voice saying, this operation was a botched execution. And as soon as you are out of here, you need to contact Lord Leon. Lord Leon, I did an interview with her a couple of weeks before that happened to me. And um, we had some email exchanges uh, over that. And she reviewed the entire situation and said, Judith, yes, something went wrong during that uh, surgery, but I, I, I cannot exactly tell you what it was. So that was, um, and, and then I thought, maybe I ask one of the nurses if I acted strangely. <laughs> and, um, I said, what, what, what happened after the um, surgery was finished? She said, you were very, very agitated. Actually, we had to give you a sedative because mm -hmm. you tried to jump off the, uh, off the bed and we had to give you something so that we can roll you back into your room. So something was going on there. Uh, I, I have no recollection of it. But that was a very, very strange experience. Wow. You know, it's interesting. My friend just had a, a new cancer treatment done on him. And uh, after they did whatever they did to him, they kept him for 10 days of observation. Well, the day they let him go, he went home and he spiked a, a horribly high fever and went unconscious and into convulsions. And, uh, and he never really regained full consciousness for several days, but when he was at his most um, alert, when he was still like, his eyes were kind of still closed, he'd open them once in a while, but he was extremely agitated and they had to keep him lightly sedative, sed sedative yeah, under a sedative. Yeah, so he couldn't get up and jump and rip the cables out and stuff because he was doing the same thing and they were sending us, uh, you know, the videos from the hospital and you could see him laying there and he was just, he was like fighting. You could see that there was this fight going on. Mm -hmm. It was very interesting. It's amazing that you said that too. Hmm. And then they said this was because his brain went into like a toxic shock. Mm. So it was a brain trauma, like you're stating, and it caused some type of agitation. It's very interesting. And it's mm -hmm. so funny too. I know Sovereign Key, Lauda. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I was going to say, yeah. I, yeah. Sovereign key, we, we're all familiar and she's love, love, lover, lover, yeah. lover. Yeah. How yeah. interesting. It's I, I'd like to hear more stories because Lynn will tell you a story. Uh I went in a couple of years ago for an endoscopy, and they typically give you the type of um drugs to get you relaxed and then put you out and they scope you out. Well, apparently they tried to do that with me and I'm out, right? But I'm fighting the doctor. Oh, wow. So the doctor can't get, I apparently got grabbed a hold of his hands so much that it began to hurt him. So he calls in uh, two assistants. They can't get my hand unlocked from his. And so they didn't do the procedure. <laughs> and he was a, a Korean doctor and he went out and told Lynn, she says, well, how is he? She says, we can't do the surgery. She says, we're going to have to get fentanyl to put him out. Uh, but she did, your husband is very, very strong. So yeah. what is this? I mean, is this, is this a natural protective instinct that we're experiencing? I mean, are we fighting from other potential spirits wanting to Move I in. don't know if this is right at all, Wayne, but I literally heard it's a serpent reflex. Oh, like, you know, when you cut the head off of a snake. I, that's what I literally like, just heard. And I, yeah, I literally just saw, I think it's just part mm -hmm. of our, of our anatomy. Yeah. What, what, what do you think, Judith? I have no clue. And, but I'm not disturbed by that. I can happily yeah. admit that I have no clue. I don't know. What I yeah. love about your presence is that even in, in, you can tell it's just very calm. It's like, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. folks, this is what happens, you know? Yeah. No big deal. Just go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> well, Judith, this hour has come and gone. Tell everyone, I, I left you a link to your YouTube. Tell it, how people, they can get in touch with you. And if you have 
more contact information, send it to me and I'll yeah. post it in there. Yeah, I have, um, yeah, my channel is Night Flight. <clears throat> Not, uh, what did you say? You I, I, I got something. I knew it was something, but uh, yeah. Black Lightning. <laughs> but, well, you know, that's not bad. <laughs> That's not bad. Yeah, night flights. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's dark yeah. outside. That's correct. It and sounds like a Dean Koontz book, outside. doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you. I mean, yeah. Anyway, well, you know, the correlation's still there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So okay, yeah. That uh, that is my channel. I also have a Patreon site, and that and people can access that there. Um, I'm working on a website, but we will see. I have to be as you know i have a leftover from that surgery so i'm constantly having the impression that i'm sliding out of my body when i'm walking i have the impression that the ground is not solid so <clears throat> uh, i have to take things slow yeah. but i'm okay with it it's not that i'm sitting in the corner weeping about it yeah it is what it is now yeah. Do you have half, like like half, like you're seeing half the empty space and then half or the whole thing goes invisible? No, I, I don't have any of that. Well, how are you explaining this? That, yeah, how, I, I, I cannot explain it in any other way. I really have the impression that even when I'm sitting here talking to you that sometimes I have the impression of sliding out of my body. And that is because there is an injury where they operated. So, and uh, as I said, I'm, I'm, that I'm all constantly dizzy. That's a given, it's normal. Wow. So, um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, it's normal now. For you, yeah, that, that, that is the new normal. <laughs> My new normal. Your new normal, I mean. <laughs> Uh, well, I, and, and I, I can tell you when I came out, uh, of the coma, I was paralyzed on my right side. Mm, okay. And so, um, I can tell you, you, the body is a remarkable thing. And I, I believe Judith, you have that within you to heal yourself. I mean, I literally healed myself. My, my, my neurologist didn't under know how I was doing it. Yeah, maybe in time, uh, you know, this, uh, something will uh, regulate that. Yeah. But as of now, it is what it is. Uh, I'm not. Well, we're going to keep you on our thoughts. Um, <laughs> you know, I have a list of people that. Uh, so, anyway, yes. But uh, I was just going to say that is why I have to take things slow now because yeah. there are many times during the day where I really have to rest my head not necessarily sleeping, but I have just uh, the, this urge to rest my head and uh, relax for a little bit. And when I feel that I do it, uh, there is no sense in forcing that. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Well, Judith, it's been a joy. Let's get you back on. And uh, I enjoyed this. How about you, Trina? Oh, totally. Yes, Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, fun. So nice yeah. to meet you, Judith. So nice to meet you. Yeah, we um you should I have your email address now because yes. yeah, you had to have Trina. I mean you two all yeah, get together. yeah, and uh, you have to come on as well. I would love to. I think I saw you with Wayne and I was like, wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And that's interesting that you're friends with Lauda. It's such a small world. And it's yes. such a, it's a big world, but it's amazing how we're all connected to kind of the same people. That's why I tell you, I believe that we're going to a place, we're all going to be in the same neighborhood. It may I not sure be the same hope house, so. But it's going to be the same neighborhood, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I expect to see Mr. Rogers there, you know? Right, why not? <laughs> right. Wonderful day in our neighborhood. <laughs> exactly. All right, everybody. Thank you all. Thank you, Judith. Thank you, Trina. Everyone, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Trina, I know you're doing more live shows and uh, make sure you subscribe. And thank you, Soul Tribe. And uh, thank you, all the moderators. And uh, hey, thank you all. So we'll see you tomorrow. Ladies, stay with me right quick as we go out. Bye-bye. <laughs>